Hello my friends, welcome back. We are about to embark on a bookshelf build. I, I'm going to do this all by hand, so no power tools. Um, just because I want to show you that it's possible. And I want to show you a few little shortcuts you can make um, along the way. Because we're not, if you decide you're using hand tools, you don't always have to 4S everything or 4 um, four square everything. So I'm going to show you a little, a few little, um, little tricks on that and how you can cut little corners with hand tool woodworking to kind of speed it up a bit. Um, one of the drawbacks of working with machines is you have to be able to use every single side all the time. You can't, you can't have just two reference, a, a reference edge and a reference side. So it's kind of a, I don't know, catch, it's a different, they're different ball games. So working machines is different than working with hand tools. Um, the good worker, woodworkers can probably do both. So I'm not saying I'm a great woodworker because I've not used a lot of power tools. <laughs> um, at least not in any of the high end ones. But I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but let me show you kind of how I back it up and kind of explain this a little bit. So during my in my day job, I had a coworker came to me and she wanted to see if I could build a bookcase after watching my spice rack, um, seeing me build that. So I was like, I I I, I love the idea. Um, so yeah, I, I I like cabinet style woodworking. I tables and chairs and stuff. I enjoy those, but cabinets are kind of my favorite thing um, so and the bookcase is basically a big cabinet <coughs> so anyways um, I'm kind of always fascinated by how things were done before people had had access to plywood um, I don't know I'm weird but anyways she gave me this this plan I'm gonna kind of shoot down here so we can show you all the paperwork in my different stages so this here was the original, original idea she gave me. Um, she wanted a bookcase that basically had a one, and a, a one and a half foot bottom shelf and then three 10 inch shelves above that. She wanted it three foot across were her main dimensions. Um, at least from for the inside space for the books. I had I made sure because I wanted you always want to make sure you can have room to if you because the um, all these the three foot four foot and ten in, ten inch the outside diameter you always want to make sure that will fit in the space. So I made I made sure before I after my finished drawing that the actual size of the bookcase will fit in her space. So you always want to make sure you do that. Um, so then she gave me this and then I went home that night and I kind of did a couple quick basic ideas for a bookshelf on a computer because it was just, it was quick and easy. Um, the only real difference is I just kind of drew this up. What I started with was, can you see these little rec, it's kind of a dark paper. Um, what I started with was I actually started with this drawing because this is more of a traditional with the, the bar in the middle of the bookshelf for and that that protects it from racking so that is a necessary necessary part if all you have is the shelves that doesn't really give a lot of um, a lot of stability for the bookshelf moving in this direction now this is only a four foot or four and a half foot bookshelf so it's not really tall but anyways we I want to you want to keep a support so you want to keep some supports about the middle now the back will have a back on it so that'll help support it from there but the front you need a um, I guess a, a rail across the middle here to help from that support traditionally you want it you want it as close to the middle as possible so this is the original one I came up with. 
I started at the bottom because you would like you need some kind of step in for a, a toe kick and so I started with that and I decide I thought I'd make these two inches just because it's it's twice the size of the four, uh, four quarter boards I'm using but um, anyway so we have one here and one here and one here so I did a rectangle on the bottom of two inches that was three foot across and then I put another for my shelf that's uh, it's it's three quarters what I actually decided because that's after doing milling of a one inch board you end up having about three quarters and then and then I then I put a, a foot and a half space here another rectangle a foot and a half by three and then again I did my shelf again so three quarters and then I took a 10 inch one and then I did my other rail because that's the that that's about the middle at the middle shelf and then I did my another 10 inch rectangle three quarter inch rectangle 10 inch rectangle and at the top um, a two inch rail across the top um, if you don't do this I think it just looks like a, a box something you'd buy at any other store it, it, it just looks cheap to me so I, I like this top rail now this one's not necessarily really structurally right necessary um, but I think it looks better in my opinion um, but I looked at this and I didn't really like personally now I, I've, I talked to a bunch of people and some people probably about half the people I talked to liked this version as opposed to the one I came up with but um, I didn't like it didn't look right to me having two narrow shelves here and one here and then a large one it just didn't it didn't really fit my aesthetic it, it I don't know I personally didn't like this so I thought well what if I just move this down to here what would that look like so I did a quick drawing of that and I came up with this um, and I brought both of these to her because she's the client. She's the one paying for the materials. So I came, I came to this, and this is, and I asked her what she, her opinion between these, the two drawings. Um, and she preferred this one. Now, what I also did was I kind of was starting to think about the joinery. Now, it. I wanted to know if she wanted to see the joinery because that would determine if I would use like through dovetails on the top or something. I, I, I do it, it vary a lot of things. Or if these which are going to be mortised in would be through mortise or um, kind of like in my spice rack I could do a um, housing dado on the front too. It, I, I wanted to know if she want, what she wanted to see. If she wanted to see the joinery or hidden the, hide the joinery. Now, hidden joinery really doesn't take anything away structurally, and that's what she wants. So we're going to do a um, we're going to hide the joinery of this this case. Um, it do, and hidden joinery does make everything look cleaner. And everybody wants to kind of all the woodworkers out there want to show off how good their joinery is, but. That can kind of get messy sometimes. So everybody's got their own look. The only real aesthetic, because it, it it's nice and simple, but um, I wanted to do a little bit of extra things on it. So I talked to her about doing an an arch here in the middle one that kind of lightens it up a little bit. I asked her if she wanted the top. She doesn't, um, which I think it looks. I think it looks good that way. It kind of separates the two. It doesn't look like you just took it off a machine and um, built it. So we're going to put a little arch here and for aesthetics. And then this is kind of a necessary thing. It helps it sit on the floor better. 
I put a little arch in the bottom here to kind of separate the two feet. That way, if there is any undulations in the floor, you can make it fit a little better. If it's a flat board all the way across, now this is only, I think actually it ends up being 10 and a half inches. Um, or something, I'll go over that in a second. But um, that to me looks a little, it, it gives it a little bit more freedom to move. If it's a full flat board, your board has, your, your floor has to be flat all the way across that and you have more space for it to rock back and forth. And we're also going to cut this one back a little bit and strike a line across, kind of making it, making it tip back a little bit because that way it stops any tipping actions from happening. Um, one of the big things that are happening with the har um, IKEA furniture is they're all falling over because they do things every, every, it's easier to do everything square than it is to make little angles and things. So anyways, so if you cut this, this back one a little bit shorter, the, the whole bookshelf will tip back a little bit and so it'll, it won't fall forward which is, can hurt people. Now this again, this is only about a four and a half foot bookshelf, but you never know, she might have kids someday and you don't want them climbing around on something that's gonna fall over on them. So, that was my initial drawings. We, I talked to her about it and I had to decide which side she liked and then we kind of talked about a few elements that we she liked. And the top, also here, as I talked to her about having an overhanging top, kind of like in my spice rack, and I asked her if she wanted rounded edges or um, chamfered edges, and she wants chamfered edges. So this is kind of what that's going to look like. This is my, can you see all of this paper? I hope you guys can see all of this. Okay, so this is my, the final drawing. I basically took, started with this, did my same little rectangles, and if you notice, I have little ticks on the edge here. That's how I cut, originally drew it. So I just took a line, I centered it, I figured out about the distance that it's gonna be, and I took little ticks and I went up and I just kind of marked where all my lines were and then I connected them on both sides and then drew lines across so it's basically a box there and and for the top I'm going to do a quarter inch quarter inch quarter inch um, chamfer so it's, a, it's going to chamfer on the top and the bottom and that's kind of important because this is going to be below eye level. So you want to have some decoration on the top. If it was up higher, I would probably only do the bottom. If you're only going to have to look up at it. But we're going to do that. And I decided the width of the top by doubling the thickness of the, this rail. Um, because whole number ratios look better. It's that golden rule thing is kind of complicated math and stuff. If you use whole ratios, it makes things, it's pretty close to that anyways. So we have, this is a three quarter inch board that runs down here, which is the next, the main visual element that you see. So this overhang is kind of the negative space of that. So I'm making that an inch and a half because that's twice of three quarter, um, three quarter times two. So that's gonna be an overhang on all four side, all, all, th all three sides. So the sides and the front, it's gonna overhang that. And for this, because this is a two inch board, distance of the board, I'm moving it, I'm also doing, going in two inches, so this makes this a perfect square right here. And then half of that is one inch, so I'm doing an arc, again I'm moving it over two inches, so I'm doubling this space. So if you think about this, this is a rectangle, uh, uh, I think they call it a 
golden rectangle. It's two inches by four inches, so it's an exact double. And then I'm taking an arc from that one inch line down to that, and I'm gonna even that out. So that's just going to be a, a gentle curve through there. Um, and I'm gonna do that on both sides. Now, this, the, this part, my little foot area on the bottom, I'm going to do a three inch space here and a two inch space here. And the reason I did three inch here is because I have this um, toe kick area and I want to have some space for that joinery. There's no joinery back here. So we are going to have three inches on the front and two inches on the back because that's again, it's a three to two ratio. It's, it looks nice. And since it's again, this is a two inch, two inch space between the shelf bottom of the shelf and the bottom of the legs. I'm going to split that distance here and do one inch. So I'm going to do one inch and by one inch arc on both sides there. And the joinery for the, the toe kick, a, a cabinet one is three inches, but that was, it, it didn't, it didn't look right for me. And this should still be fine. So this is going to be an, I split the difference of that three. So this is a three quarter inch board. So that puts that in the middle. So um, what is that? Uh, three eighths on either side of that leaves you with a one and one eighth inch space on either side. So that's the main part of the joinery, the, 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 the layout and kind of everything I, I did. Um, and again, this top, it's going to be just flush with the edge. Um, and then it came down to figuring out the cut list. That goes back to doing the joinery. So basically, I went over my drawing and I just kind of made a list of all the main differences, the main parts. And then I, labeled, I numbered how many there were, would be. For the back, I'm going to do a shiplap type style back. Now it's not going to be one solid piece because that's a big piece, and I want I want a lot of room for expansion and contraction. So with this one, it's going to be we're going to put a groove along the top and the bottom board. So it's going to be um, chamfered in, kind of just like our spice rack. We did our back for that, and I'm going to do a um, a groove down the, the the back side so that it can sit in there with a little bit of leeway so it can, it can, it can, it can expand and contract. And then I'm going to put screws into this middle shelf here from the back into that so that it's screwed in in the middle and grooved in on the bottom. So anyways, so there's going to be nine boards at five inches that, that covers that distance between here. But anyways, um, I took all this, the number, the, the parts, and I labeled them and by the number of pieces. So there's two sides, a bottom shelf, which is going to be different, and the top shelf that's going to be different. Um, so the top part here is going to be different than the bottom part here. A second. Ah, sorry. The top is going to be the top, so that that's not counted in this. Um, the so we have the sides. And sorry, we have the sides. Um, the bottom shelf. And whoops, I actually should use the actual drawing. That's what's screwing me up here. The bottom shelf and the second shelf are going to be a little different because it's got that rail here. And then we have the second and the fourth shelf. And our supports, 
which are these three parts. And then we have our top, which is going to be the, the top of the, the top and the back. And then once I had all those labeled out, I kind of wanted to figure out the sizes. Um, so the sides will be, this is the total distance of here, plus a um, 3 8 joint on the top. And um, so you always want to count for the joinery. So the sides, you want to make sure you count for this joinery here, but the bottom shelf is um, because it's going to be the, having the groove on the back and the front. Um, and this that's the full full width of the 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 cabinet. The second shelf, you have to subtract both the distance of the thickness of the boards in the back plus the thickness of the boards on the front. And then these, these will be flush to the front, so all you have to do is subtract this distance from the back. So that's why these two shelves are different than the other ones. And the supports, again, all we have to really think about for that is the distance of the joinery. And we already determined that's a two inch distance, um, width. So, there. So basically, we just want to, when you're going through a cut list, you want to just, you want to account for all the joinery, otherwise you're going to be short. And as you're drawing, you're thinking about how it's going to be constructed. Um, it's pretty easy. I try not to do too complicated of a joinery in any of my projects, because the more complicated it gets, the more uh, difficult it is. But... Um, yeah, so anyways, after I got all these dimensions down, I did cheat and I did go online and do use the board foot calculator. Um, a board foot is 12 inches by 12 inches um, square of a board, one inch thick. So if you've got, if you're doing easy math like that, it's easy to figure out, but it's it's also pretty Google's out there there's calculators everywhere for it so all I did was put in Google board foot calculator and one came up and I used it um, I don't even know which one it is but I so I just put my dimensions in and that gives me each of these and I added them up and then I took the board foot price the price for board foot which in this case it's 675 I know it's more expensive other places, but that's how much it is where I can get it. Um, and I multiplied that, so that gives me the price of the materials. That's, now that's not going to be including the screws and things like that, but I'm not even going to worry about figuring that out. That's the minimal. Fruit screws and finish is, I don't know, it's pretty cheap. So I'm not counting for that. The wood is the main cost um, of, a, of a project. Um, maybe some of the other ones where you have actually more hardware, you might want to count that in. But anyways, once I came up with all of this, I took it back to her and I got her approval to get started with it. So today, or in the next video, we're going to start by doing all the milling or um, the rough milling. Because I do normally do rough milling and then a final milling right as I do my joinery. So um, I guess we're going to get started in working. So turn this down so that light's not in the way. So thank you guys for um, joining me today. Please subscribe and uh, check out the net rest of the videos. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming along. I'm sorry I can't give this one away like I did the Spice Rack. Again, this is a commission piece, so 
obviously somebody else is buying it. <laughs> so uh, we will be giving away other projects again. So if you didn't win the last one, you will be. You, there are other opportunities. Um, and I really do appreciate everybody who followed along with the Spice Rack video, the video series. Um, so anyways, thank you guys, and we will see you next time. All right, goodbye.